Ah, with the medicomo via Nana. May I know your background? Yeah, good evening, sir. Or, I didn't get your name right. Uh, you did very well. Thank you, sir. <laughs> this is the first time that that is impressive. All right, uh, I am uh, a geologist by training, but I've uh, worked with my current employer as a safety officer, safety supervisor, facility maintenance coordinator, and now head of general services unit. Okay. Thank you, sir. Moses Obutsu. Yes, Hello, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. Yes, um, by training, uh, by, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by training, and I've uh, been practicing for the past three years as a facility manager in, in the real estate sector. Good to meet you. Thank you very much, sir. All right. I just muttered my name. <laughs> Sorry, please. Orisa is in there, sir. All right. Anyway, I am from uh, electrical electronics uh, engineering background and uh, I've been in the FM, uh, FM platform for like uh, over 10 years now. That's, That's great. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Tosi Adedui, are you? Okay, Tosi Adedui, can we meet you please so that we can kick, kick off? Yes, Tosi Adedui. Um, I'm an, I, my background is electrical and right. I've been doing facility management for like five years now. Great to meet you. Thank you. As I said, my name is Abel. So, Okay, you bring. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, good afternoon. Sir. My name is Jubril Moile. Um, I'm a real estate consultant. I have a background in estate management. I've uh, been a maintenance officer before, and an FM officer in my previous employment. And I'm still continuing to educate myself more with FM and real estate. Thank you. Ebuaba Emmanuel. Um, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, good evening, class. Um, so like you said, my name is Emmanuel. Um, my background is actually chemical engineering, but I have been working as a facility manager for the past three years in my in the aviation industry. Thanks for joining us. MM Echo. Are you online? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. I just joined in, but I think everybody is introducing themselves. Yeah. Yeah, we want to meet you so that we know who we are dealing with. Okay, my name is M.M. Ekon, and um, I'm a facility manager for real estate. And, uh, Thank you. <laughs> All right. Emeka Adni. Okay. For the sake of time, let's proceed. As we move along in the class, we get to know ourselves. So today's topic is electrical and beauty maintenance. Okay. So the reason for this class is for you to know what you inter interact with on a daily basis and know how you manage them, you keep records for improvements, for decision making. So it's not enough for you to, be, to just be managing facility and you don't keep record, you don't know 
what you're doing. You need to know the type of voltage you are playing with, the type of uh, machine or generator you are handling, the type of diesel you are using to run your generator, why you need to do the testing that you conduct before accepting your diesel and editing arrangement of your building. So that's our, that's the various topics we'll be looking into this evening. So pay attention and listen attentively. If there is need for question, raise up your hand, ask your question. We'll give you time, we, we'll address it as we move along with the class. So we are, some of us who are electrical background, you all know what power is all about. Power is a product of voltage and current. That's where your electricity is generated from. All right, what is power? Power is what you use to drive your appliances, what you use to run your machines, your lifts, and every other thing that's needed to be driven in your facility. It's the power that brings comfort to your facility, that runs your AC, that runs your water pumps, and so on. So you need to know what power is all about. Where is it generated from? The sources of power, the type of power, the various uh, components that make up power for generation, transmission, and distribution. The, the interconnection of electrical component for the supply and transfer of electric is known as electrical power. So we have power operation, we have the generation, the process of transforming energy, mechanical energy into electrical form. So from your generator, mechanical energy is transformed into electrical form. That's when you derive power. So from the diagram on your screen, you can see we have different stages of power. Where you have the generation, that's like the Kanji down or Shiroro down, wherever. We have the generating station. We have about five of them in Nigeria that are well known. You have the transformer that modifies this power that you have generated from the source into the format, into the value that you want to transmit along the power line. So mostly what is generated at the generating station is 60 MVA. That can be modified to be able to transmit it along the power line. So transformer, as you can see from the diagram, is a machine. It does not generate its own electricity. It only modifies from high voltage to lower voltage, or from low voltage to higher voltage. It just like it just like a modifier. So as you can see, you see the pylon, those low, uh, high tower. They are used for transmission, like the production of food until it get to the table of, a uh, of the consumer, what you have produced is meaningless. The same thing with power. Whatever you are generating for your station, if it doesn't get to the consumer that, that needs this power, what you are doing nothing. That's why you see those towers. They are called pylon to transmit what you have generated and modified to various Consumer. We have the commercial consumer and the uh, domestic consumer. So you can see distribution substation. 
that distribution summation will further reduce the value of what you are transferring for the pilot into what is suitable for use in our various homes and uh, offices. So the various voltage that are accepted in, in our homes and in our offices are 415 volts or 400 for commercial demand. Why that of is 220 or 240 volt, 230 or 240 volt, as the case may be. So, hello? Okay, 240 volt for a domestic use or 230 volt. Why that of commercial is 450 or 400 volt, depending on the transformer you are using to modify your voltage. So we have the basis of the electric power. The electric power is the product of the current and the voltage. So ideally, you will not see power like that. It has, it's a combination of the current and the voltage that form what we call power. In electricity, we have direct current power, which is DC and alternative current power, which is AC, mostly I'm going to uh, shorten to be AC and DC. And the reason for DC will be communicated to you later. So DC provides a constant current or voltage. So all the interrupted power supply you get from DC, there is no oscillation whatsoever. There is no instantaneous current. It's direct, it's constant. As long as it's producing, it's constant. Example of such are the battery, the rectifier, as diodes are used to achieve a direct current. So most computers and digital equipment use DC power. Like the computer we are using now, is making use of the, this, the battery inside, not the direct current from your wall or from the wall socket. So batteries are used to achieve this constant power, uninterrupted power supply. So the alternative currents, they, are transmit, they transmit power over long distance at higher voltage. That's when in our that, the diagram we saw, we saw the pylon, the tower that are used to transmit this generated power from the from the generating station to our room. It's instantaneous. It is transmitted at a very high voltage. That's why it is uh, characterized as kilovolts because they go to long distance. Because of power drop, they tend seem to they tend to transmitted at a very high voltage. Are we together? So they are generated through an alternator. Sometimes they call it a, a, a turbine. So it's a combination of a moving part and a stationary part. So when you get to this generating station, you will experience the beauty of electrical engineering. So you see a very big turbine water is falling on it and is rotating. As long as that fan or that turbine is continuing to rotate, electricity is generated. That is natural source of electricity. So equipment that uses alternative current are your refrigerator, your ACs, your chillers, your pumps, your lift, anything that is of three phase and single phase, they make use of alternative current. Your pumps in the house, they make use of alternative current. So power system or power uh, electrical power cannot be got from just one source. We have various sources of power. We have the solar, we have the timer, we have the uh, uh, nuclear power station, the, the wind, the natural gas, and so on. So you can get your electricity from various sources. It's not restricted to just hydro. 
Hydro is one of them. Uh, wind, wind is one of them. As long as that turbine is moving, electricity is generated. What it needs to con uh, continuous rot rotation of your turbine, that is what you need to generate your electricity. There are some uh, machines that has the generating part inbuilt. So they are part of the system. Example of such are uh, this wedding machine that the weather carries about. So they generate their electricity for their work. So we have others which are external, like the generator we use at home. Even the so-called kanji down, they are external source of electricity to the consumer. So the electricity are generated from these sources and transmitted or transferred to your home for use. So that's external source of electricity or power. So we have what we call load. Load is not something that is on your head. Load is anything that electricity can drive or can run. That is what we call load. Like your lighting system are load. Your refrigerators are load to the electricity that is coming. So that is load. Load is power system delivers energy to load for their operation. Loads ranging from industrial equipment to household appliances, as I've mentioned. So loads are expected to operate at a certain number of frequencies and phase. That's why we have three-phase machine, single-phase machine. So the three-phase machine are the three lives. Some uses neutral, some don't use. Why the single phase is life and neutral? So like your uh, blender, they make use of single phase. Like your leaf, they make use of three phase. Your industrial pumps for industrial boil, they make use of three phase. Are we together? And frequency also play a major part in running your appliances. The power you are generating must maintain a certain frequency. Like in Nigeria, we make use of 50 hertz. In America, we make use of 60. Depends on the agreed uh, range that uh, that will be standardized for use. So here in Nigeria, we make use of 50 hertz. Anything different from this range, between 49 and 52 or so, anything above or below this, we have effect on your appliance. They will not work. Even if they are working, they are not working. They will not work well. At times, they will not even come up. That's why you need to pay attention to the frequency of what you are generating. The voltage might be correct. The power factor might be okay. But if the frequency has any kind of deviation, your, your system will not perform well. Are we together? And also, any appliance must have a specific wattage. That's why your television will say running uh, the, the, the power rating of your television might be just, let's say, three watts. Like your washing machine might be uh, 0.7 something, something horsepower. Your electric kettle might be 1,000 watts or 1,200. So that also guides you to know the type of socket or the type of uh, these uh, breakers that those appliances must be connected to. Because if you overload a particular socket, it will lead to fire. So that's why the wattage, you must pay attention to the wattage or the, that's the power rating of the appliance, appliances, I mean. So you also consider the quality. So you might be generating and the quality is not fine. So the, you are not expected to operate anything if your power quality is, is poor. So you need to pay attention to all these things that can drive your load. It's not only just the power, we have the frequency, the, 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 the rated power, that's the wattage and the quality of what you are producing. We have conductors, which is also known as cable or wires. So they carry power from the generators to the load. This is what transmits electrical energy 
from where it is produced to where it is being used by the consumers. They are called conductors. We have protective device. So they prevent damage during failure or injury. A typical protective device is the fuse. That was in the old. What we mostly use this time around is the cycle breaker. The cycle breaker is what is commonly used now because fuse can, you may be, might be protected, but it's not that recommended as we speak of in the industry today. So we go for cycle breaker and other sensitive uh, element that can provide protection for your appliances. The reason why fuse is being taken out because some people, when the fuse get blown up, they tend to rewire it. An attempt to do that, you might be overloading, overrating that uh, fuse that may not be able to protect what is meant to protect. And also, you might be underrated. Instead of protecting, it will give room for that equipment to go bad. So fuel is, is a highly, highly uh, discouraged to be used. So we use cycle breaker. There are various types of cycle breaker. We have the head leakage cycle breaker. We have uh, 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 miliation cycle breaker, MC MCCB. We have a metal case cycle breaker, MCB. Depends on what you want to achieve. The head leakage cycle breaker helps to take out any leakage current without you knowing. It. Take it out and cut off the supply from damaging your appliances. We have the capacitor and the reactors. They are also used as power limiter. So they are used to regulate or to, to regulate the value of supply that coming into your appliances. So they are used to reduce current demand or power system, used to limit fault current. So these are capacitor and reactor. If you go to a typical a substation, you will see all this, and they are called capacitor bank. And they also help to reduce wastage of energy. It helps you to save costs when these are installed in your substation. We have the power electronics. They convert AC to DC, or DC back to AC. That's why in your computer, there is a converter there or a rectifier. Let me put it that way. In your generator, the household generator, we have a rectifier. It, it, it's called set of diode because diode allows passage of electricity in one direction. So they consider it for this purpose. It's helped to rectify AC to DC or DC back to AC. It's vice versa. So they are semiconductors device. They are electron device. So switches quantity of power ranges from few hundreds watts. So they are used to limit the current that will come to your appliances, like your computer. You cannot use 240 to run this. There's a set value that is expected to run your appliances. So these are the devices that are used to achieve this. So we have, as I said earlier, we have the residential power system, which is the low voltage. It's ranging from uh, 110 to 240, as the case may be, based on the country that you are living in. So we have low voltage distribution line. These, these are the wire you see on your streets. So they are mainly one, between 110 and 260. So here in Nigeria, we use between 110 and 240, phase to eight. We have the commercial power system. They use high rise building or more. They are used in uh, offices and malls, event center and so on. Niger is a residential power system. So we have homes and office electrical installation. So this is a, a typical layout of how 
your electricity is being distributed in your home. As I said earlier, we no longer use fuse, like some people say, cold out fuse. We use a, a distribution board in our homes to distribute electricity to various uh, load as appliances in the installation or in the building or your facility. What it means that it makes work easy for the, uh, the technicians who are coming to work or maintain your electrical system. So if there is a fault in your home, instead of trying to trace which one, which fuse or what is responsible, you just go to the distribution board, you will see a trick breaker. So what you need to do before resetting that breaker is to find out what has led to that breaker to trip, what made it to trip. So when you identify the fault, you correct the fault before you come back to the distribution board and reset. So that's the advantage of circuit breaker over fuse. And you can't throw it away. You reset. It hardly go, uh, it hardly spoil. So it, not, it doesn't go bad easily. So you identify, you reset it. So it continues to work. So that's the advantage of distribution board. And you see every breaker rated 12, uh, 5 amps, 10 amps, 32 amps, 50 amps, and so on. It also helps you not to overload a certain breaker. If you know the, the, the power rating of your appliance, like your electric kit or your cooker in the kitchen, you cannot go on, maybe it's 50, 50 amps. So you see 25 amps. A, a, a cooker is already placed on that 25 amps. 50, 25 amps, you have 10 amps left for that breaker to triple. And you cannot go and load another thing to that 25 amps breaker because to keep tripping, at the end of the day, the breaker will go bad. It helps you to evenly distribute your load in an electrical installation. In electrical installation, we have the ring cycle uh, installation and the radiator. So a ring forms a complete ring running from this consumer unit that see you to all the socket and back to the consumer unit. What that means, the ring station, the ring carry life wire with the neutral to all the socket in a ring form. They are looped together. So it's not that advisable to do such in modern day installation. So rather, we prefer the radar distribution, whereby you take supply from the shop or straight to where that electric cooker is, or straight to where your laundry is, where you have washing machine and your electric uh, iron. So radar is from distribution board to every point, but ring is looped along the line. So I, we mostly discourage that because it's, you don't really have control over it. it you can overload the, 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 the system while you try to loop them together. But radio is apple for apple. So from decision board where it is needed. So this is diagram for radio, as you can see. So in our installation diagram, you will not see a tap tap picture of all the components. They are represented by a symbol or a symbol. So these are some of the symbols you will be seeing when you are giving electrical layout. Maybe you are supervising the site. So these are the things what has been upgraded. So most of them come in another format. So these are the common picture that you see. Like here, we have a this is electric fan for a living room. We have a, a socket. We have a fluorescent that has a, a four feet or two feet fluorescent 
as the case may be. These are the symbol you will see. This, this is the symbol and the, the illustration. Like this one, this is four feet fluorescent. Four feet fluorescent, two feet fluorescent. We have a electric bulb, fans, and so on. So you need to familiarize yourself so that anybody cannot come and uh, uh, bamboos you with all manner of uh, things while you are supervising a site. So in electricity or electrical installation, you need to consider the following when designing. Type of supply and heating arrangements. Heating is very, very key in electrical installation. If, you, if your heating is not properly done, that's the that means you have not done anything. The life of your the, the, the life of your personnel and the equipment are at stake. So you have to get it right. Earthing first, you need to consider the earthing arrangement of your installation. The temperature also plays a vital role. So where you have a high temperature, maybe uh, the the materials you will need here may be different from the one you have very close to the sea. You understand? In the sea, there may be moisture every time. That will be corroding your, 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 term, your terminal points. So causing high resistance. So you consider all that. Can I engrave it with, a, a, what's it called? A limit, a limiting uh, liquid that will help me, that will help to be reducing that uh, contamination with moist, moisture, or can I increase this or that? So you consider temperature while doing your design. The possible presence of moisture is, is, is a factor. Like those of us living close to the the sea. So the breeze that will be coming or the air that will be coming is full of salt. So it can have reaction, it can react with your uh, electrical installation and cause damage. So you, you consider fire, the possibility of fire, extent to mechanical protection, provision of future modification. Can it be extended? Can I take it from single phase to three phase or vice versa? So all those things need to be considered. So Operating maintenance cost is a factor that you need to consider. At times, some people will see a particular installation in one country, they want to replicate it here in Nigeria. Knowing fully well that our maintenance culture here is poor. You don't expect to install a very fancy bulb high up there without considering the maintenance cost that, that, that will cause you to go and be renting. Uh, Credits or whatever, just to change a particular bulb. So you need to put those maintenance costs into consideration. You want to change a bulb of just 700 naira. You are renting a, a lift or whatever, or, or a, 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 a hoist that can take you up. You pay 100 as only to rent that one. Maybe coming into your building, you need some modification, destroy one or two things before that credit can come in. So it doesn't make any sense to install a particular uh, something and the maintenance is high. So it doesn't make any sense. You put that factor into consideration. Also, you consider alternative. If this thing has for today, can I have alternative to replace it? You have to consider that. You must have a plan B doing electrical design. So in electrical maintenance, a number of factors also need to be considered. The first thing to be considered is the ability of the cable to carry its required load. As a rated voltage, we have 2.5 mm, we have 4 mm, we have 1.5, 1 mm, 16 mm, and so on. But because of cost, people want to cut cost. They use 2.5 instead of 1.5 instead of 1, uh, 2. 2.5 mm, 2, 2 mm. 
and they will be used for their oven or electric cooker. Within the short period of time, that wire gets melted and the whole installation is compromised. So you consider the, the cable or the conductor that you are deploying to your site. The lighting point, you can go with 1.5, as the case may be on 1 mm. So some people, they just want to see electricity. It will work for you for a while, but after some time, you start spending money on maintainers, which would have been avoided at the initial stage. So another one is all conductor that is live cable should be insulated against direct contact. You have to ensure that your installation, your installation is well protected, it's well insulated against internal and external factors, the people that may be coming in contact with it. You may not be careful at all time or enough to know that this thing is not before you know it, you, have, you must have touched it. To prevent that, you also ensure that they are well insulated against all factors. And also, you have to ensure that they are protected with circuit breakers or other prote pro uh, protective device. Because when you come in contact, the breaker will trip. It has sensed abnormality. The breaker trip or the breaker, the circuit open. So it saves the person and also save your installation. You put all that into consideration. They call it all potential electrical conductor. In most cases, like in the in the old, there used to be uh, plumb, plumbing pipes that are galvanized. So if you are in such situation, they said the or they are potential electrical conductor. So they can have contact with leakage current and they become life. What you need to do is to ensure that they are acted, they are protected, so that the life of your personnel are safe, even at your home is safe. So that all conductors must be provided with excess current protection. That is fuse cycle breaker. Protection cannot be over emphasized in electrical installation. You must put all this into consideration. You use breaker, sensitive breaker that can trip or that can respond within a second. Are we together? Hello? Yeah. How are you? Yes, we are here. Yeah. We are here. No, All right, thank you. Thank you. So, portable appliance tests. Why do we carry out tests in our installation? So, when you carry out tests, you know whether your installation is still healthy or not. So, it helps to keep abreast what your installation the, the current state of your installation. So the facilitator should create an asset register of all portable appliances. You must keep register of what you are testing. So why must you keep register? It helps you to that is, bring you closer to your equipment, you know their status, you know what was changed in, 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 in how it's working, and so on. And this record that you are take, uh, keeping, it will help you to, it will, it will help you when you are presenting your case before the management for decision making. For example, you, you are flooded with of a, a, a generator that is too massive for your facility. And you are there, you are keeping record of the load. You can take the, 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 the trend. So as peak, you take at peak period, off peak period, in the evening and in the morning and afternoon. You know what your load demand is. And maybe the highest arm you have gotten is, uh, let's say, 140. 
140 arms. That's the load when everybody is around. And also, your half peak period, you are getting about 160 when everybody has gone to work. What do you do? That one, what, what can that one bring to you to help you present to your management or whoever that you are reporting to? This is what the actual law we, we need. And you have 500 KVA or 400 KVA on your site. You are wasting money on this, you are wasting money on maintenance and so on. Because, because of this, this is what we have come up with. I believe if we bring 200 KVA or 150 KVA, it can work for us. Based on your record that you have gathered over time. So, and also, maybe you, you so you you will say let, uh, they said every one fifty hour or two fifty hour we do a maintenance. Maybe before that your maintenance comes, your gen has started misbehaving. Maybe at one fifty or two hundred started misbehaving because you have record of of this. You're able to tell management we may not need to go with this two fifty or we can go above three hundred or so. It helps you take substantial decision that can bring down cost and also improve the way you work. So we have common electrical problems in the building. We have flickering lights, high rate of bulb burnout, phase reversal, phase loss, tripping circuit breakers, and so on. These are common things we experience in our uh, installation in our facility. So there are causes and there are solutions. What, what causes my bulb to flip? It could be loose or firm contact, that's partial contact. So what do you do? You check and retight the loose contact or the loose connection. You have high rates that your bulb is burning out at every point in time. It could be as a result of high voltage. You pay attention to the voting. That's why quality of your voting, quality of your power that you are using. It's not enough to just change the bulb. It could be power-related issue. It could be the lamp holder itself. So you pay attention to them. So when you notice high rate of bulb burning out, you check what is the problem. It could be high voltage or excess voltage out of range of plus or minus 10. And the tolerance is plus or minus 5 whatever you are generating is plus or minus five. It could be some standard material that have been used for your installation. It could be the switch or the lamp holder itself. What do you do? You regulate voltage and frequency to normal values or range. So you check the frequency as well. It could be that the speed is too high. The speed of your generator is too high. So you carry out quality check and resolve. So phase reversal occurs when uh, you have main failure and they come to rectify it. An attempt to connect back the voltage, uh, the, the cables, I mean, they, they put red to yellow, yellow to blue, and so on, they miss it up. And when you are pretty your three phase machine, instead of going clockwise, it will be going anti-clockwise. So most especially it's a problem from the disco, people that uh, come to work on your feeders or so. What do you do? You contact them so that they can come back to rectify it. Phase losses, we have open cycle, could be fuse burnout and so on. So triple cycle breaker, could be insulation breakdown or short circuit when uh, life and neutral come to or two cables stop, come together. So it will cause the circuit breaker to trip. Could be ground to head fault or head leakage. So it could be anything, maybe a bed or uh, a reptile died along the your, your installation line and bridge the two cables together. It can lead to circuit breaker trip. Most especially 
in a very tight distribution, but where reptiles, this war gecko and rat can gain access to. So you, you have to see, ensure that those appliances are well taken care of to prevent reptiles from bridging them. So consumption monitoring. So a simple and helpful project for the facility manager to undertake is to record monthly electrical usage from meter reading. The information can then be plotted as, as a graph for this. You can use whatever uh, record, as I said earlier, whatever value you have generated, you can use it to, to make your decision to know whether you actually need so, 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 or you don't. So this can provide a reasonable indicator of seasonal fluctuation and also highlight any significant deviation in consumption. If your consumption suddenly goes up, you know uh, what has happened. Is anybody tapping from us? Or is there a 40 appliance that is drawing unnecessary current or unnecessary uh, power? So it helps you to know exactly how your is behaving. So that's the essence of keeping record and monitoring, monitoring and keeping a record of your system. We have different types of metric system. We have the maximum demand, the check meter. The maximum demand is mostly used for commercial building where large amount of energy is, demand, is required. So use maximum demand there. So they used to monitor time and loading in power distribution station. So you can use it for so many things. So we have the check meter. Measure the electrical use of equipment, mostly installed in multi-tenanted building. So that, that is the small meter that you be your customer, those who live in the uh, uh, multiple uh, buildings, like the 1004, the where you have plenty tenants, many tenants coming together, you use check meter to get their consortium and you pay them accordingly. We have extra low voltage ELV. So that's what we say a means of protection against electrical shock. They operate in a voltage not exceed exceeding 50 volt AC or 120 volt DC. That is ripple free. It is not instantaneous. There is no oscillation or uh, yeah, oscillation and in terms of alternative current. So it's constant, it's moving constantly. Example of ELV system, a closed circuit television, that is your CCTV, they make use of this extra low voltage uh, system. Card access control, security burglar alarm, fire alarm, uh, baggage cannon, and so on. They make use of this very low voltage. So we have power transformer. As I told you from the uh, onset when we started, that transformer does not generate its own electricity or power. It's just a means of modifying what you have generated to where it is needed. We have the step up transformer and the step down transformer. So transformer used for transmission network as the power transformer now. They are, they are used for transmission network of higher voltage, step down and step up applications like territory KV. You don't expect to use 33 kV in your house or in your office. What do you need? You need 415 or 220 volts. If you are, if they are transmitting 33 kV, it doesn't mean you should go and tap from it for your house, uh, household and appliances. What you need to do, you need a transformer to step it down to the value that you need, that you require to drive your appliances. So that's why we have the step down transformer. You step it down from, there are some that are from 33, you step to 11, from 11 to 
414 and 414, the primary, the secondary side is uh, 240. It's the other way around when you are stepping up to meet a particular power demand. 415, like most offices on the island here, they, they generate from that generator, which is 415, stepping up to 11, from 11 to a, a common bar where it is further modified to their, to their taste or what they need. So, so that's power transformer for you. They operate mainly 100%. We have the distribution transformer used for lower voltage distribution network. Like I said, we have the step up and the uh, step down. Here you see they serve as a means to any connectivity of user 230 volt, 440 volt, and the case may be. So this one is uh, user friendly. You can make use of this value of voltage with when the transformer step it down. We have dry type of transformer. In most cases, like in a uh, uh, enclosed environment, environment where it's airtight, what you need there is this dry power transformer. So they don't need oil, they don't need anything, they are just there. So what you need is just cooling. You provide cooling for such transformer because they are emitting heat as they are working. So they are called distribution transformer. So they are used in high rise building to distribute load, uh, power demand from one floor to another. So in all those high rises you see on the island or in the mall, you will see these transformers there because they are airtight. We have the liquid transformer. This is not common, though it exists. So transformer maintenance. We have various types of maintenance on transformer. We have weekly maintenance. You check all this. You check all this on weekly basis. We have one for monthly. This is the what you check the oil level, the oil cap, the silica J and so on. We check them every month. If they have changed color or if the level of oil has dropped. We have the one for biannual maintenance, that's six months interval. The flash points, the sludge content. Some, you take this to lab and test. There's a range that you must, it must attain to know whether it's right, it's still okay or not. So these are resistivity tests, water content, acidity, and so on. So we have the annual maintenance. We check the transformer bushes for crack, check the component, the measure if there is any damage. Then you have OLT and so on. You clean when appropriate. We have two years maintenance, we have water temperature, oil temperature. So we measure the transformer bushes as well. So these are carried out every two years. So we have transformer tests. Why do you test them? To confirm transformer basic design expectation, to confirm transformer main and basic criteria. Test is mainly done in prototype units. So you have routine tests to confirm individual units operational performance in a, product, in, in a production lot. So test is carried out on every unit produced. So all the components that make up transformer must be tested for them to deliver what is expected. One special test. So this, this is, you engage a professional who knows how to do this test on a regular basis. So you don't just call anybody to come and test or work on a transformer, at the end of the day, they damage it. So they are carried out by specialists. We have generator and fuel management. So we've dealt on generator mostly when I talked about turbine and generating station. So we just do a few one here to 
keep you in line with what we are doing this evening. What is a generator? So it's a machine that converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. As I told you, what, uh, what is required in power generation is just something that will be moving that uh, turbine. The alternator is also called, as long as that alternator is moving, as the other moving against the rotor, the rotor is moving against the stator, I mean, electricity will keep producing. So that is what a generator is. It converts mechanical energy into electrical energy for use in an external circuit. So generator, they provide almost all the power for electric power grid. Like what is grid? We have national grid where all the uh, power is linked together. So that's why you see all these pylons, these high tower. When you are traveling, you see them in the bush. So they are national grid, they are linked together. You want generated from uh, uh, Kanji Dam, Shiroro Dam, Egbi, Egbi Power Station, Jeba, uh, Sapile, and so on. They are linked together. Why are they linked together? Because they, they are designed to have the same frequency, the same amplitude, the same voltage level. That's where they can be linked together. So that is what grid, national grid. And the center of the national grid uh, control system is at, which is the NCC, National Control Center, NCC. That is where they regulate the power generated all over Nigeria, Oshobo, Oshun State. Are we together? Hello? Yes, sir, we're together. Yes, sir, we're here. Yes, we're together. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, provide electrical motors convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. That's different between a generator and a motor. A motor drives, they derive current for them to be run or to be operated. That's why it's called farm motor. So they must draw current for them to be used. Why electric generator they give out is like this in and out. Generator gives out power. Why a motor receives power? Give and take. So that is motor, the difference between motor and a generator. It produced electric, the produced electric energy can be used to transmit power. Whatever you generate for your generator can be used either as commercial level, industrial level, or uh, domestic level. So generator supply currents usually have 50 hertz. The frequency must be taken into consideration. The, accept, the, the I said the range is between 49 and 52. Anything outside this is out of range and some Appliance will not operate if the frequency is out of range. So the the well accepted one here in Nigeria, 50 hertz, work to ensure that your generator is delivering at 50 hertz. Type of generator: we have alternative current generator. We have talked about this and. DC power. This is also the same thing. Alternative current generator. They have single phase. As I told you, have different. Uh, they operate in different format, like single phase, three phase, and so on. So they have a, a single phase generator AC power at. So they are specific. They, they are specified. Specific specified utilization voltage. They have a range that the voltage must be. Like I told you, between 230 and 240 is for single phase. Why out of three phase is 415, between 400 and 450. Anything outside that is out of range. So that is voltage value for you. We have the DC also, the generator constant speed, uh, uh, constant uh, voltage. Uh, there is no alternation, there is no oscillation. 
in DC power ratio. So when you are selecting your generator, you consider the following, just like when you are designing your power installation. So you, you consider this factor also when you are selecting your generator. Determine the sum, uh, I mean, the power rating of what you want, your load analysis, you must do your load analysis to be able to determine the power rate demand for such load that you have calculated. So you have to get it right. So you know if, if your total power is uh, 30 watt or 30 kVA that you've calculated, you are not expected to go and buy exactly 30 kVA. Why? Because there will be some uh, diversity factor or some, uh, you must create that allowance in terms of transient current or sudden rise in power or surge or call. Your generator should be able to, sorry, withstand surge or current. So what you what I expect you to buy when your load demand is 30 kV is to go for 40, 50, go for 45 kV to 50. So that range you have a tolerance to play with about five or so. So you determine the surge rating. No, whatever happened, can this so if the surge rise above this, my generator should be able to stand. You consider that ensure voted rating match. Maybe your appliances, what you have, your, the load you have in your home, if they are designed to operate at 400, uh, let's say two, 230 watt or 230 volt or 230, 240 volt, you don't go and buy a generator that operates at 260 and above. It will not match. It will work. So we should pay attention to this detail when you are buying your generator. So procedure, there are procedure installation. Well, the first thing is to engage a technician or authorized service dealer for your installation. You comply with the standard operating procedure as SOP. Use the right cable, do the right airting, use the right diesel, and so on. Confirm the rate of comply with latest standard. You do that. So we have generator and foil management. Why do you need to manage your foil? You manage your foil so that you can prolong the lifespan of your generator. A bad diesel will contaminate your generator, we, we spoil the injector, the nozzles, and so on. So you start wasting money in trying to fix your generator instead of paying detailed attention to the diesel supply to your site. So inspect generator to detect any damage before installation, to check for that. Confirm adequacy of what we talked about this, we talked about all this, and check that the batteries are, are okay. So ensure your diesel is not too far from where your generator is situated. Use appropriate uh, fuel separation, diesel line, and so on. Who is, who is talking, please? Okay. They are working on it. It's a technical problem. They are working on it. And it's from your side. Every other person can hear. I can hear you clearly when you talk. Can, ev can everybody hear me apart from the... Can all of you... I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Sorry for the call. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, thank you. It seems there is a poor network where you are. Just try and uh, improve on the network that you are using, as every other person can hear me. Thank you. All right. So. Generator and frame are we are still on generator and frame. Specification, you consider the following prior to your installation. Before you install your generator, you consider this thing that have been that are listed here. The type of generator. Is this single phase? Is this the three phase? The location, the enclosure, engine speed. Our engine speed is 1,500, uh, 1, that's 1,500. 
the frequency we talked about frequency factor and so on. Far, the acceptable power factor is 0 0.8. So you consider it, is it 0 0.8? The static condition, how do I start it? Is it manually started or electronically start, uh, can start electronically? Kilowatt rate, that's also power. The power rating of a generator is key so that you don't go and buy two times and waste money. Number of phases, three phase, single phase, and so on. Efficiency, the generator is, is designed to run at least 90%, 80% efficiency. The switch, the connection, the switcher, and so on. So you consider that the transfer switch, eight years that you want to install. Why do you need to install that? So these are the safety precautions that you must take when you are installing your generator or equipment. Proper installation of the exhaust system. The exhaust should not fit where it could be. It can disturb other users of your building or uh, facility. Provide adequate ventilation because if there is no adequate ventilation, the generator will be doing overheating. Before you know it, it will it will knock. It will burn your top gasket and eventual knocking of your generator. Ensure that the radiator is expelling. It's working the way it's supposed to work. It's not close to the wall. There should be a gap. Direct emission away from inhabited area. Don't allow your smoke to circulate where other people are living. The generator area must be free from combustible material. Why? Because if, um, if eventually fire, there's an outbreak of fire, instead of you to use a single fire extinguisher to quench the generator because of the uh, other combustible material, you'll be, you'll be looking for additional fire extinguisher to use because those combustible will help to, they will support the fire and you may not be able to quench, quench it. So that's why you are, you are advised to set your generator free from combustible material. Power for this supply must be turned off during installation. Proper covering and installation of all electrical connections must ensure that all cables, all electrical uh, connections are well insulated and protected. Earthing is key, proper earthing and grounding for the generator frame. So use cord set and cable of specific, specified capacity and don't allow anybody to smoke around your generator. What you do, you put a no smoking sign, safety rule, do not smoke here, or highly, uh, there is a danger also, unauthorized prevented. So you put all that into consideration. We have the alternator, as I told you earlier, alternator is what makes all that power side a, uh, electrical side of the generator. That's where electricity is generated from. So alternator produce electrical output from mechanical input. That's convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. Cause the movement between electric and magnetic field, which then generates electricity. So there are cable ones together. So as the rotor is rotating against the rotor that is there, against this rotor, a stator, electricity is produced go in opposite direction and attempt to try to catch up with each other, electricity is produced. And the simple uh, uh, illustration of how electricity is produced. We have the stator, <coughs> component of alternator, we have the stator and the rotor. Stator control a set of electrical conductors, one in coils that is over an iron core why the rotor produce a rotating magnetic field. It's the rotor that moves around the stator. That's what generates electricity. So this is what you do for your fuel system. The pipe that connects the fuel tank to the engine, the pipe that ventilates the fuel tank, 
when you have a, a diesel tank, there should be an opening whereby the heat that is the return for it from the generator, the heat from it can escape through that, uh, that through that opening. So if you don't do that, it will cause your, uh, your, your tank to expand and explode. It can cause damage to other facility. So ensure that your tank has an opening, just like a breather hose on generator, or just like your nose, where you breathe out. The connection for overflow from the fuel tank to the drain pipe. So you have to ensure that there is a connection. In case you overfill your tank, there's there is an outlet where that excess can flow through, so that it won't uh, spill all over the 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 area. You consider that the fuel pump, the fuel injector. The water separator. The, the purpose of the reason for installing water separator is to do a primary filtration before the fuel filter of your generator. So that helps to improve or extend the lifespan of your generator. It doesn't contaminate your injector or the fuel lines. So once you have that, at least you are. You have done seventy percent of the filtration before it allows you to go to the fuel fit uh, the generator fuel filter. So it is advisable you install water separator to your external tank. The cooling system of a generator they withdraw heat when generator components are heated up, like the exhaust. So as generator is heated up, the smoke is being expelled out through the exhaust. So we have the battery charger. So this helps to keep the, 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 the performance of your battery. It helps to charge it as the generator is draining from it. So the, the battery charger, that is the alternator charger, is helping to charge your battery constantly so that the battery does not run out. We have frame and main assembly. So these are support base of the generator. Under it, you have the fuel tank. There are some that prefer to use the generator base tank. So under this, you have that. We have the control panel. So it contains the generator elect electrical outlet and controls the user interface of the equipment. And this is where you communicate with your generator, is your user interface. So these are the panel that indicates the error, the fault, and the operation of it. It has the history of your generator, the number of times you started it, you start it, the number of times it has shut down, the number of times you have overload and so on. So the electronic panel helps you to keep record of it. It's just like it's like your computer. You had a software where all those information that you are looking for can be gotten or generated. Yeah. So we we'll go on break now. When we come back, we'll continue from where we stop. So we are generator maintenance now. So 530 we'll back to our various uh, location. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, sir. It's okay. Thank you, Thanks. sir. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. You are all welcome back to the class. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, we stopped at uh, generator maintenance. So we'll continue from here. We have, are we all in class now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, thank you. Yes, sir. We have the daily maintenance. What you should check on a daily basis. You check the oil level. I know you are not directly involved in doing this. Ensure that your 
or technical staff perform this duty every day. So they are expected to carry out this duty with their checklist. They mark it at the end of their check. So you ensure they do that every day. So we have We also have, uh, yeah, we have what we do at every 200 or two hours maintenance. So that is what, this is where most of us belong. This is what the majority of us are aware of. When you ask anybody, when do you carry out generator maintenance? They will tell you every 200 or 250 hours. So you are right. So what you need to do, what you should be paying attention to, ensure that this spray filter is replaced at every 250 hours. Test all the protective devices of the engine. Check generator bearing thoroughly. Thoroughly clean the engine. Inspect generator windings and these are why you replace the oil, the engine oil. You drain sediment and water from the fuel tank and replace all filter. This is what you do every 250 or 200 hours. There are some you carry out every 500 hours. One of such is the uh, battery is running out. It's not plugged. It's not plugged. Okay, there are some you do every 500 hours. The radiator cap, you check if it's okay. Drain and clean, flush the cooling system, the exhaust, you heat it so that the smoke can come out. The, the accumulated the carbon on the pipe, ensure you they expel out. Carry out turn up and adjustment for the engine. That's 500 hours. Check if the turbocharger is operating properly. You know what turbocharger is? is. If the turbocharger is faulty on your generator, the performance of the generator will reduce because the turbocharger helps to bring in fresh air and expel hot air from the engine. When uh, fresh air is brought into the engine, so we give it additional power for performance. Ensure that the turbocharger is proper condition or good condition. Check engine mounts for proper torque. Check the exhaust system for leak. If your exhaust system is leaking, reduce the power of your generator. Ensure that the heat is uh, properly taken out of your generator. So we have two years and three years maintenance. So your battery is expected to last for at least two years if your charging system is okay. So you replace it after two years. After two years, there's no guarantee that the battery will still continue. What you need to, it can fail you when you do not expect. So what you need to do based on industry standard, you are expected to change your battery every two years, whether it's working or not, change it every two years. So replace thermostat. Uh, the thermostat is fixed inside the radiator, the, the, the water pump and the radiator uh, hose. So the, it might be that the thermostat uh, plug and block or does not open after two years. You are asked to do that, replace it. If you don't replace it, it will cause your generator to do overheating and it will damage the, your engine. What, does, what is not supposed to cost you, uh, let's say uh, 20,000, you spend over two million or so to, uh, to be replacing damaged part of your generator. So maintenance is key in facility management. Pay detailed attention to how it is stated and follow it. So don't say you are trying to save costs. You don't want to do maintenance on your machine or appliances. If you don't do it, you are prolonging the evil day. It will definitely happen. It says that they call that potential hazard. It doesn't happen, it doesn't mean it will not happen. Ensure you keep to maintenance standard. Replace all beds and hose. Farm bed only can cost you your job. Ensure you pay attention to farm bed. The status, 
If you are not already involved, tell them to snap a picture of your farm bed and see and examine if there's a cracked area, change the bed. You are expected to replace farm bed at this recommended uh, time. Ensure you have a spare because when you don't expect you can just cut. You start running hectare scatter. If they hear to if they get to know that it's just come off farm bed that you didn't plan for, it can cost you your job. It doesn't talk uh, talk good of you. Obtain oil sample, carry out analysis of the oil. So at every 200, uh, that's the two, two years. Refill with conditioner and coolant solution. So ensure your radiator is filled with coolants and the other uh, solution that can improve the performance of your radiator. Obtain sample of used coolant and carry out test analysis as well. If you have proper diesel management, diesel management now, so total control of the diesel consumption, you have to be in total control of the diesel consumption from supply, delivery, and the usage. You have to know how your generator consumes diesel because these questions are mostly raised concerning diesel. The procurement fee, you are, you are not, you are play for play, the your gas fee, you are fee, but when you have detailed management record book to show at any point in time they call you, you have record to show for it. That means you are in control. So you should know how much your generator consume every hour at a certain percentage of load. So some people don't know. You that interface with it, you should know at so so percentage, maybe 25% load of my generator, my diesel should consume this. 50% load should consume this. Uh, 75% or 100% my diesel should consume this. So everybody feel uh, when you start your generator, it consume the same diesel or to know. It depends on the load that is subjected to, your generator is subjected to. So you have to have track of all this percentage loading. So as a former you, you, uh, you determine your load on your meter reading on your generator, that's the pounding. You check, you check the amperage, you use that one to determine the percentage that your generator is operating on. So whatever KVA, let me give you this. You should have your pen there, note it down. For you to know the, uh, um, the total load that your generator can handle. I, I want to give you a short formula that will help you in doing your job. If we have, if it's, uh, let's say 100 KVA is your generator, the expected amperage there is supposed to be 140. That's 100 times 1.4. That gives you the, the rated amperage at 100% that your load, your generator should carry. Anything above that 140 amps, you are overloading your generator. You are running above 100%. Is that taken? Sir, can you take that again? Yeah. Sir, can you take it again, please? Sir? If your generator is 100 kVA, hmm, your full load amperage should be 100 times 1.4. That 1.4 is a is a is a, a calculation that has been uh, that was done to arrive at that. It's a it's a multiplying factor now. 100 times 1.4 will give you. 140. That's, that means the highest amperage that can be drawn for your is 140. That's the highest, that's the maximum. You can apply that to all other generators that you have 500 kV times 1.4. You know the highest amperage, that's the highest amperage that can be drawn from it. So you now do that in percentage, times it by 75, times it by 50%. 25%, you know the various load at every point in time, that's the percentage loading of your generator. So with that, you know the volume of diesel that you are consuming at every percentage load. Is that taken? Hello? 
Hello. Yeah, we're together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, it's taking. It's taking. It's taking, sir. It's not right. that, sir. How much for this one? I'm trying this one. This one. This one. This one. Yeah. If it's 500 KV, you test it by 1.4. It gives you about eight, 700 or something or so. So if it's 1,000 KV, you test it by 4. It gives you 1,400. That's a maximum amperage that can be drawn for your generator. All right. Thank you. Let's proceed. So you monitor and maintain of diesel stock. It's your responsibility. You have to keep record of it. So you'll be more commercial with consumption pattern. When you do this, you'll be more commercial with consumption pattern. So if anybody wakes you up tomorrow, how much diesel do we consume a year or so? You know how much you are consuming at every load, every percentage load. You know it. So probably of the uh, uh, up to ordering pattern over a given period of time. You know when to reorder. When you add, maybe some people who use diesel very well, when they are 33,000 liters, they call for another tanker. So they, this, they, that means their reordering level is 33,000 liters. Maybe that one can serve them for two weeks. So when you are short for of 33,000 liters, it means you are at risk. So patterns like this, it helps you to have control over your diesel. So you will not be running head scatter to try and get the best supplier or who is available to the supply because you run into crisis. So that is the essence of proper diesel management. Are we, are we together? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Diesel supply. You check the quantity of diesel in tank before, before you take delivery from any vendor. You check what you have in stock and what before and after. So you check what is delivered to your uh, to your tank. So you all take it together. All the receiving and the buy unit uh, department must be there to take this stock so that tomorrow they will say you, are that you, you there was a shortfall in your uh, diesel uh, intake or the vendor is arguing with you. So that is the essence of taking the uh, stock before and after supply. So this helps you to ascertain the quantity supplied. Before you take supply to, you have to do your diesel test. We have different type of tests to ascertain its quality. Diesel will be proven to be compliant with industry set standards. So bad diesel decreases generator performance, and bad diesel damage the generator. So to, if you accept bad diesel, if you compromise bad uh, to take bad diesel, it will affect your injector or your fuel line. That will cost you millions of naira to repair. Let's assume you are using 2,000 kVA or 2.5 2 MVA. So you compromise diesel quality that will damage your injector. So replace one injector. You are spending, let's say, 400,000 times about uh, six or eight. As we are running to millions. So ensure that diesel test is carried out appropriately. And everybody must agree, the, the receiving units or the receiving department must agree that this diesel is clean. And you have the testing kit. We have a, a, the density, a, the capillary test of the density. There's a standard set for that. You have the uh, 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 clarity test. If the, the color of the diesel is, is okay, the water test, which is done with litmus, and so on. So various things that can tell you whether this diesel is clean or not, or is okay or not. So you ensure that that is, you can't be too busy not to do it. For, for this one, for this one. How can? So we, this is the value for test, pH test. So we have a, a range is between six, 0.7 to 7.0, that's the pH test. We have the clarity test, it must be 80 to 90 percent, must be the color of diesel. If it's too white, it's not, if it's too dark, it's not okay. So that's why a range has been set for this. 
between 90 and uh, 18 and 90. We have the test test. This test is carried out to determine the diesel supply is adulterated with kerosene or not. So the, there should be no change in color when mixed with reagent A and B in the test kit. So specific gravity, which is also the density, you use hydrometer to do that. There's a range set for, uh, a range value set for good diesel. Within this value, we can, the diesel can perform very well. The generator can perform very well with this value. 8.20 and 8.0.0.820 and 0.86. Most time we get 0.84 and 0.85. Most of the record, the record I have, I believe most of you also are within this uh, range, 0 0.84 and 0 0.85. Are we together? That is the standard. So anything short for of this, don't accept the diesel. We have the ET system. Our next topic is a uh, ET system, that is the grounding system. The ET system or the grounding system. In our earlier uh, paragraph, when I talked to you about the importance of ET. When you are considering installation, electrical installation, ET must come to play first. You consider it first, because that's guarantee the safety of your installation, electrical installation. If your installation is without ET, the whole installation is compromised, the personnel, the animals, everything there is compromised. When you come in contact with life wire, there is no spare. It, the person will be electrocuted and that's the end of the person. So that's why we lay emphasis on eating. It must be checked regularly, six months interval. Why? Because as the weather changes, the eating resistance, the resistivity of the earth also varies. So you ensure you want the resistivity of the earth at every point. There must be, the conduction must be quick when there is leakage current to the, to, to the, to, on your installation. The conduction must be quick. So you don't compromise the standard of your editing. You have to use quality materials, quality items to perfect your editing system. So a system of cycle that connects part of an electrical cycle ground is called editing. So, you have to define the conductor electric potential relative to the conductor surface of the earth. If the earth is as to be a zero potential, do you get? It's assumed to be zero potential. There is no work done on it. Just like you place a water or you place some water on a flat table. Uniform size, the water will remain there, isn't it? Hello, are they still? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to use. I want to use what you can relate with. You place a bowl, a uh, 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 water on this on a flat surface without that surface bending, the water will remain there because there is no work done on that surface. So that's how the earth is assumed to be. The earth is at zero potential, zero potential, except something interact with it. That's when the potential, the voltage will change. Are we together? Just like equal and opposite, the second law of motion also, Equal and opposite, no work is done. Just like it's at equilibrium. The upper force is equal to the downward force. That's how at potential is. It's at zero potential. So, and also the resistivity must be so low that when something else is coming from external body, it can easily go through the earth. So that's why you use Copper, copper has high conductivity. And you use electrolyte. 
like the salt that you pour in your earth pit, is to enhance the conductivity of any leakage current to the ground. It allows passage of electrolyte is any that allows the passage of electricity in liquids or aqueous solution. So it, that salt helps to conduct the leakage current from the installation to the, the edge without any disturbance. So that's why you cannot compromise your AT system. Ensure that the right things are used in your AT. So how do you do AT? You use copper uh, uh, direct the, the light through the grounding system into the ground rod. That's copper rod. Copper is used. So all your installation is tied to the neutral point to the edge, linked together. You draw a wire from your distribution board to that copper that you bury on the ground. And ensure you put salt or charcoal there. Charcoal does not absorb anything. It's a purifier. It just, it's like a purifier. It keeps making way for any impurity. Uh, it does not allow any impurity. It absorbs it. It's an absorber. And salt also, salt is your electrolyte now. It helps to conduct the faulting electricity or the leakage current to the ground. And the resistance of your ground was not exceed five ohms, five ohms and below. That is the value. When you are carrying out uh, LT test, we recommend every system, but sometimes we do once a year. So the value you must get must go exceed five ohms. If you exceed five ohms, that means it's, it's, it must be uh, improved on. You must improve it by servicing that eight point. Is that taken? So that's not very, that's more clear. Can, 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 can you repeat this, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, I said, Editing is the process of connecting all your installation to the ground through a copper rod or earth pit. And there are materials that enhance, enhances the uh, earth conductivity. One of such is the electrolyte. Most of you use salt. That's electric, electric in the form of uh, uh, liquid or so. You use salt. So salt allows the passage of electricity easily. So when you pour that salt around your earth pit, it lowers the resistance of that earth. Resistance is opposed to oppose the flow of current. That's the, that's the uh, duties of a resistance. Just like I'm coming like this. Something is pushing me back to where I'm coming from. That is resistant. For you not to have such, you have to pour salt around that place, electrolyte. That will, okay, fault is coming up. I'm running to where I can escape. So that electrolyte, that salt that you pour is helping you to fasten the conduction so that it will not return back to where it's coming from. If your resistance is high, it will push the current back, then it can lead to fire outbreak in your, in your facility. Is that taking? Ensure you use copper rod. Copper has high conductivity rates and salt, electrolyte, and charcoal. Charcoal does not allow impurity, it absorbs impurity, it, and it cleanses that, that pit. So as the electricity, the, the, the Abnormal electricity is coming, you just go to the, to the ground and it neutralizes it. Is that clear now? Sorry, did you use oh, there's a value you call. There's a value you call there. Yeah, is that so that? I said the, the head resistivity was not exceed five ohms. Oh, HMS, five ohms, that is the unit of resistance. Must not so if, you have more than, if you have more than five ohms, the resistance is much that the electricity will for, talk. And you request for improvement of your editing arrangement. You, 
you have to, it's, that means your healthy system is compromised. It's not healthy. But five ohms is even too much. Most of the time I get 0, 0.00 something, 0 0.004. So you have to improve it at every point, every time, I mean. But it's recommended you do it twice a year. You know, the reason is this. Hello, sir. Is, eh? Hello, what you said improving, do you mean tighten all the, all the tightening cables, tightening so, them? So it could be that your, there's a partial current along the line. The, the cable is not properly, it's not firm. It could be that there's a high resistance of soil there. What you do is to dig around it and pour salt and water around that place. It will lower the, resist the resistance. You know, I told you, I said, I say power is the product of current and voltage and V is equal to IR and R is the resistance. It will oppose, it opposes the flow of current. You oppose the flow of current. See, we tell it's telling the current, don't come here. But if that value of resistance is low, as the current is coming, it just finds its way into the earth and neutralizes all that force. Hello, are we to miss the salt and charcoal together or either one? Well, if you dig around, put charcoal, put salt and cover it in sand. Um, Only for the charcoal. You dig around your. Let's say, let's say this is your head rod. Okay. This wire that is attached to it. So this is your head rod to the ground. Eh? Are you seeing me? Yes. Okay. Maybe around this place, there is the earth resistivity has gone off. Okay, the air transitivity has gone up around here. You are having above five ohms here, right? So what you need to do is to dig around here, pour your charcoal and your salt, cover it and turn up, uh, put water in it. It will dissolve that charcoal, not that salt. And that salt will allow the passage of electricity. Okay. Salt and charcoal in what proportion? Eh? In what proportions, salt and charcoal? And let's just say a bowl, a bowl of charcoal around it. But that salt, one bag is okay. Big bag, there is a bag that they normally say in the electrical shop. It's like a, like a, a sack of a big, big, the bigger size of homo or detergent. Okay, got in that. All right. So the reason for eating, we all know that is to preserve, is to preserve your installation, is to preserve your installation and protect your personnel and your equipment and your facility as well. So that's the reason for eating. Okay, Mr. Daniel, I can see you raising up your hand. Please let me hold on. So ask your question. Just let me put I, anybody that raised up. Hello, Mr. Daniel. So, hello, sir. Yeah. Okay, I just have two questions to ask you, please. Okay. Number one, this um, improvement of resistivity you talked about at the, around the, the 18 rod. At what point do you do this? Is it after you have measured your resistivity and seen that it is above five, above that uh, five ohms that you carry out this uh, this assessment, or is this something you do on an annual basis, based on your on your on your instinct that your estimate may have, may have started failing? And besides, what is the relationship of this maintenance you want to take to the idea of? Tightening all of your 18, 18 cables or 18 points to see whether they are maybe at the transformer point or at every of your BPs and everything. Is it necessary to be tightening all those uh, loose ends to, to yeah. improve your 18? That's number one question. Number two, 
I've had these incidents in the past whereby uh, I, I was having serious um, costs in meter. That was my, my meter, my, my cost of electricity was very high. So somebody in Nepal advised that we should go and check all our ethics. <clears throat> and see whether the ethics are in good condition or that they are, that they are loose or something like that. In fact, the recent, I recent and two weeks ago. I had to call an electrician to come to my house and check my ethics cables to see whether the electricity is loose because I, my meter is it. This time I loaded my meter. Before you know it, it's all I've read out. But over the past one week now that I did it, my, my reading has actually completely reduced. I've not bought, I've not recharged my meter. So what can you tell us about this idea of going to check your editing cables and whatever in, in regards to uh, high consumption of the system? Those are the two questions I have. Okay, yeah. I feel when I started, is one of our topics here, I made mention of testing. Testing is very, very key in your installation and facility management. So when you, you don't wait until you start having symptoms or signs that this thing is, is not in good order. So the testing will help you to determine all these parameters, whether they are okay or not. Like the editing test, there is a fact as a standard, as a value that you must not go above, right? So when you are carrying out periodic tests, it will indicate that this value has gone up or this value is still in place. So that's number one. Ensure you do it on a regular, at least every six months, every six months. And the reason for, and you know, when you have partial contacts, if, you're, if you have a loose connection along your installation, that installation is compromised. So it will affect your ET. Maybe your ET cable is not properly, it's not firm to the DB or all other appliances. So that means there is no continuity. There is an open circuit. Your, your house is at risk. If you touch any metallic plate or anything conductor, it can harm you. Or can even lead to death. So we ensure that on a regular basis you check all these connections, all these terminal terminal points to see that your cables are firm, are uh, intact. For the uh, consumption, you know, leakage current, abnormal current is it's coming. If your everything is not in good order, it can lead to a uh, high rate of billing. You understand? The leakage current that's supposed to escape is not escaping. It's still within, it's, it's now become a circulating current around your home. Around the new, it's just circulating around the neutral. And that's excess current. What draws, what, uh, uh, what do they be for? They be you on cor the current, that's consumption. So that's current is circulating around the neutral. It's not going to the edge. So you need to improve your editing arrangement on when you detect that is 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 not okay. So that's my second answer to your question. The leakage current that is cycling can increase your B, but when you improve on your edge, that leakage current is being conducted to the edge, the ground. So it's escaping. It's not within your system. Is that taken? Hello, Mr. Thank Dan. you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome, sir. So, any other question? This is time for question because we are done with the class for today. It's time for question. If you have question, raise up your hand. We'll attend to you in the next five minutes. Go on, Mr. Eko. Okay. Amen. Yeah, hello, sir. Okay. Why are you the question? Okay. Uh, my question is I want to ask. Speak Someone take note. Because I. 
Can you hear me now? You are breaking, you are breaking. Speak up. Hello. Speak up. Okay. I can't hear you. Okay, we can hear you. Amen. We cannot hear you really. So, Gaius, I mean, Caius. Okay, what? sir. Thank you. So, my question is what facilities must you add? As in, is it only a generator place outside and the buildings? What other facilities, especially outside, must we? do anything for yeah as i from your uh, reading manual thank you said, all potential uh, electric uh, all potential electric uh, conduct not only your generator not only your installation if you have a uh, this uh, must Use mass in your facility. This is a communication mass. It must be acted because of lightning. Do you get your ATM? Okay. Your ATM must be acted. Anything that has to do with electricity must be acted. Because you can never tell when there is a leakage current to these uh, potential uh, conductors. How about my overhead? overhead. Still overhead tank. And yes. It may not necessarily add because it's, connect, it's connected to the generator. There is an installation there to your generator, right? Uh, galvanized, if you use galvanized pipe, the, the, the continuity of your generator extends to that your overhead tank. But if it's not galvanized tank, a nice pipe, you use a, a PVC pipe, you don't need to edit it. That's no link. No, I mean, no, I mean when I'm using, sorry, sir, I mean when I'm using a steel stanchions, tall steel stanchions to hold my tank, do I need to edit it? If there is anything that has to do with electricity to your tank, you need to edit it. Okay. It doesn't cost much. You can just run a wire to where you add your generator. It can take us. So far, there's the, the, the termination is fair. Okay. I want to ask, <clears throat> must you add a, a bungalow? Yeah. Anything installation, electrical installation, you must add it because as I said, is it high know, enough for you? you? Must you add it because of a stone and above? We are is not it because of uh, arrest or, or thunder strike or so? Thunder strike is another thing. That's why you use uh, this uh, indelet to bring down that thunder strike to because it also carry charges. Thunder strike, the, the the atmosphere has charges. The earth has charges. So that uh, thunder strike you are talking about. That's your 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 indelet also helps to receive that discharge from mm -hmm. the, the the storm or the sky okay. and bring it to the air. The okay. air neutralizes it. So everything is different from thunder strike and thunder arrest. So as long as you have electrical energy around your building, you must help it because you can never tell when there will be a broken insulation along the installation wire that will lead to death. So instead of you dying, they can only just throw you. The earth receives the huge uh, leakage current and frees you from electrification. OK. Thank you. Thank you, sir. MM, can you come up now? Okay, she's out. Okay. Obwaba. Obwaba Emmanuel. I think the last question before we call it a day. Yes, okay. uh, yes, I remember my name correctly. That's good. Good evening, Tabitha. 
Um, thank you all. Uh, so my first question is, um, you spoke about the, the daily, che daily checks on um, generators. So yes. my question is, you were specific about the inspection on the belt. Yes. So I wanted to know, is there a tool or a standard for checking this belt? Because from what I gather from what you said, Abby, you actually check from experience. But for instance, we are not all electrically inclined, so we might not know the the we don't experience to check it. So how do you check it? How do you know when the belt is worn out? Is it only from looking at it, or is there a a tool you can use to check it, or a a way to gauge it? So that's my first that's my first question. Uh, my second question has to do with um the the part you were talking about um when your generator is working on hundred percent. The KVA, if you have an example like the 100 KVA, you use the constant of 1.4 to check your amperes. How does that actually relate to your consumption? How do you relate that to knowing your consumption rates? How do you go? I mean, so that's, that's my second question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let me attempt to your first question. Your bed should be examined visually, it's visual inspection. You will see the wear and tear. If you look inside it, you see some kind of a line. So if that line is broken, you will notice it. That means it's cracked. It has extended its elastic limits. It has exceeded the elastic limits. So also, you see the side to be peeling off. But you don't need to wait for that. At least from our record here, Standard bed, good bed, two years plan to replace it. But the ones we are buying, like the smaller KV, the one you buy from uh, from the show, okay, circular market. At least if they serve you for six months, start planning to replace it. It's not expensive. Like the okay. one for KV, hundred KV, and so on. they are not expensive. You should even have spare. In case you notice it, you just change it because at night, when you are not expected to come out, you can just cut and resident or your, your, your client will be, will be on your neck. So it's not expensive. You have as much as you can in, on site as pay. For the other one. Yes. Uh, Sorry? The consumption rate, how do you relate it to your consumption rate? That is your 100 kV. If you're using yeah. 100 kV, I'm like using 100%. You have 100 kV. At full load, you are taking 140 amps. There is, a, is it, there is a certain amount of diesel that that generator is expected to consume. Hmm? Okay. If you divide, you, there is a diesel chart that you can just browse it, you will see it. Okay. Uh, for a chart on various percentage, they will tell you 100 kV will consume this. So 100 kV, that 114, if you want to get 75% of that 140, times 140 by 0 0.75, that will give you 75%. Can you do that and tell the whole as what you get? So you said when I multiply by, what do I multiply by 0 0.75? My 100 kV. 105 amps. Eh? 105. Okay. Right? That is 105 amps. So if you are if on your picture, you are seeing 105 amps. Hmm? Yes. It shows that your generator is operating at 75. Okay. So if it's showing uh one is that 70, 70 arms, it shows you are operating at 50%. Okay. You get okay. So this old chart, you know, if you you know when you start your generator, you get your diesel tank. Yeah. This particular experience now, forget about the chart on ethanol. You know, maybe your volume was at 10 liters when you started. It runs for one hour. You check. At that 105 amps, you check, okay, now it goes to eight liters. Yeah. That means one hour at 75%, you have consumed two liters. liters. Do you get yes. And that's how you monitor, you record it. You use your own now. You make it your own. Okay. You 
So when it goes up to that 140, you check. As also tell my diesel was this. At 140, is this. So one hour interval, you check what you have consumed. It will show you the previous minus the present. It gives you what your diesel, your generator have consumed. Is that okay, so, so what you are saying is, once I know what my consumption is in terms of the electricity supply, the ampers, then I can know how how long my diesel tank will take me. If I have like 20 liters, I will know how long it will take me if I know what is happening in the building. Yes, it depends on what that generator is operating with. Operating, okay. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, so the last question I do have, it's still on um, diesel um, management. Um, you, you spoke about knowing the quality, how the quality of the diesel can affect the generator. And you spoke about different tests and the testing tools. Are these, um, are these testing um, kits things you could use on site? Because you might have um, a company that has generators, but they don't have a testing facility where you can test the diesel, the type of diesel consumed. So I wanted to know, is there a um, on-site tool you could use to test the diesel right before they inject it into the into the generator? Instead of actually going to instead of going to a lab to do the testing and all that, you don't, you don't go to the lab. As a facility manager, you are expected to have those testing kits on your site. They are not expensive. Okay. You have the the density for gravity. You have litmus. Litmus is just like you want. You do a paste, a litmus paste. You put it on your stick or dip stick and dip. Pit. If there is water, it will change color. If there is no water, the color remains. The okay. visual check, the visual check, you, you do that one, the color and the smell. You can use that one to determine whether the diesel is fine or not fine. So the density. Please, no, please, sir, come again, come again, please. Sir. And this is a celebration you just made. About the test, testing of the diesel, please. The, you have litmus test, you rub the Paste, they call it paste. You, you rub it on your stick and dip it. If there is water in it, it will change color. Maybe from, uh, from pink to red, as the case may be, you know, the way it's designed. So for you to, do, first of all, rub it on the stick, put it on water, you see the color. Okay. So rub it again on the stick, put it in diesel. You know, if it changes to the color of water, you water in that diesel. If it doesn't, you know your diesel is fine. The, the value of density you are supposed to have is between 0 0.82 to 0 0.86. Okay. With this range, you are fine. Anything out of this range, the diesel is compromised. Don't use it. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Amen. Sorry, sir, just to follow up question Sorry, to what he asked. These are the questions that we do at the point. These are the tests. That can be done if a tanker is there to supply me this. I can do this three tests there and then. Right. Yes, yes. Three of them, the three of them. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, Thank you very much. Hello. Yes, Chimese. Chimese, Chimese on the right side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So please, uh, we, we have this uh, thermal imaging device on site, which we use to detect uh, loose contacts and uh, heating components. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the, the infrared. Uh, exactly. Please, I would like to know, are there other functions to this thing? Because uh, to me, it's, it's, it is just too basic for just, you know, heating, heating components and uh, loose contacts. And uh, secondly, Recently, we replaced an air circuit breaker, which happens to be very, very expensive. Very, very expensive. I would like to know, are there any breakers at all that we can use as a quality for this air circuit breaker? That's my question. Sir. Yeah, for, let me start with your first and second question, the air, uh, air circuit breaker. The purpose air circuit breaker by four is different from every other one. The air circuit, air liquid circuit breaker is highly, highly sensitive, highly sensitive. So it helps to forestall your installation, to restore your installation. Instead of tolerating those leakages, it just conducts it and open. 
It doesn't allow anything to happen. Don't consider the initial investment. When I don't, I tell people, when you are buying equipment for your use, you see it as an investment. What that, is, that thing is coming to do for you. You understand? You may go for the other ones. They will not serve the same purpose. And that will lead to fire or uh, accident in your building that will cost you more money to fix. So when you are buying head leakage circuit breaker, it's for investment to prolong your installation and your facility. Is that taken? Okay, sir. Okay. The other question you said. Uh, yes, Thermal imaging, the other functions to read, uh, just one factor. The purpose of that infrared is to determine any, uh, there is a certain range that a cable, you know, when current is passed through a cable, it generates heat. So when you see a excess heat on a, a terminal point or along the cable line, you know whether that cable is overloaded or not. Do you get? So that is the purpose is to detect fault along the uh, distribution line. So that, that's what I know it to be. That's what we are using it for to determine where there is excess heat. So you, it helps you to redistribute your loading system in the building, so that it cannot it, it cannot result to fire outbreak. Something you cannot detect with your eyes. It's that one. That's uh, apparatus help you to detect it and you make correction. Is that taken? Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Away. Sir, uh, yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Hello. Yes, yeah, sir. I will also to, uh, I have two observations. Uh, the first one is, I want the F-Circuit Breaker. I've seen a situation where they use the uh, ABB uh, MCB Breaker. To replace uh, F circuit breaker, is it is it okay? And it was it's serving, but I don't know maybe it will be as effective as that F circuit breaker. That's my first All right. Uh, All right. And, and to add, and to add, as was uh, the rating of ours is, uh, is like a three thousand two hundred amps. The the F circuit breaker will replace so okay. of uh, three thousand two hundred amps rating. You know, breakers are sized in various sizes. It depends on what you are protecting. So you cannot go out over rate a psychic breaker for what is being used to protect. So your range, the one you change might be different from what I want to change. It depends on the load I'm protecting. For our, the, like what you said, ELCB and the MCB were swapped for each other. So as I said, I think that's why you are in this class, so that when there's someone is suggesting to you, you should be able to tell him, no, this is the right thing to do. They may, they may want to compromise that because of cost. It will, it, will, it will do the same thing temporarily, but the purpose for which that thing is installed will be defeated. It's not, it's not, just, it's not a switch. It's not a switch that you switch on and switch off to provide you light or to provide you power. is for a reason. In case there is head fault or short circuit along the line, it senses it instantly and open. It open the entire system. So I don't know where you are protecting, but it's advisable you use the recommended breaker for where it's supposed to. Does that? Okay, yeah, yeah. okay Amen. Hello, sir. I'm not done, sir. I'm not done, sir. Okay. The, the number, uh, number second observation is there was this time they got a huge uh, facility. And I checked the density then to a 0 0.6. So I rejected uh, the issue. So, and later, the tanker driver called the head office. So, when my other was speaking, then they had to come with a, another table from the depot, which was stamped there at 0 0.6. Is okay to be received. Then we later checked Google that day, and it was noted there from uh, this uh, this uh, stuff? PPI. PPI that's that zero point six is okay for this. But then yeah, your player in your lecture, you said zero point five to zero point uh, zero point four to zero point five. 
I saw 0.6. 0.8 something, Abi. 0.6, 86, yes. Yes. Uh, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.852, 0.86. So yes. we are talking of relative density now. Yes. Relative density. Yes. You understand? So there is a, before they come up with it, it, they have put it to work into practice. So that's why they could come up with this standard. It's a standard, SOA, standard organization, not SOA. Uh, uh, as international standard, uh, so ISO, ISO, uh, yeah. ISO is the standard that has been accepted in terms of facility management. 0 0.82 to 0 0.86, that is a range. You may not get 0 0.85 or 0 0.84, but when you fall within this range, it's accepted based on experiential the practice. Okay. Right. And then the last question, Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Can I, can I speak, sir? Okay, go ahead. Mute your music. Hello, sir. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Speak up. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, so my first question is how to count loads and calculate loads. Then the second one is what right. are the equipment right. for this? Can you hear me? First one, you get the first one. The first okay. one. Like, how do you count load for a house? Okay. Yes. Then the other one is this testing for this way. Is there like a particular instrument or kit for it? And how can someone get it? Yes, yeah, there is. They have. Yeah. They will share the link with you when you need it. Oh, private okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, private chat so will share the link with you to get that uh, test kit. Uh, for the load calculation. You, just like you are doing your arithmetic, one plus one, two, two plus two, four. If your fan is one and your fridge is two, total load, the total power you need there is three watts, right? Yes. Okay. So you check, like when we started, I said the wattage on the body of your equipment, you check it. Television is six watts. Fan is six watt, AC is ten watt. That's about twenty two watt now, right? So you sum it up together. That gives you twenty two watt. The tens of generator that should be about what? Uh, if you are using three phase, let's say twenty two watt, hmm? twenty two watt. Divide by let's say 220 watts. Let's say 220 watts. Or let's say let's say all your load is about 2000 watts, right? Okay. 2000 watts. Divide 2000 by 1000. Hmm? You have two kilowatts. That is, you not convert it from watts to kilowatts because you are going to buy in KV. That's give you two kilowatts, right? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of KV, you divide it by 0 0.8. I told you about power factor when we started. You check the power factor of those appliances or equipment. You divide that two by 0 0.8. What did you get? Let the house hear you. So I'm dividing two by zero point eight. Two point five. So your size of generator will be two point five kVA. Okay. You get and you are not going to buy two point five because of all this surge we talked about, study rising voltage and all this stuff. You, you I would prefer you buy three kVA generator that will last for you successfully. Do you get? Yes, sir. 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. OLT oil light temperature or something something. Oil light temperature of transformer. We have a winding temperature as WIT you have oil temperature windings. And so it's send a test, Abby. No, is a you can say just who is who, who is that person? Uh, Victor. Victor. Okay. OLT OLT. Okay. Oil. Let me check. O L T C. Go for teaching. CP use. So called selected switch, so called at top switch. It's like say, like a top changer. Like a tap changer, it did give the full meaning. It's like a tap changer, tap changer for indicating oil level, oil level tap changer. So, so you, I, I can't see me, you can't reply to him. They are hearing me. Who was the name of the person? Victor. Okay. Like, Oil level top changer, so temperature top changer. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, on low top changer is on low top changer. On low top changer, when a generator a, a transformer is on low, it's so like what you to stabilize. If it's high voltage, you try to change it to the top that what can give you the voltage that you desire. So it's online type changer or low type changer, off low type changer, OFT and OFT. We have online and off load type changer. So it's a kind of type changer. It's a kind of switch on a transformer. Some are automatic, some are manual. So the manual that you need to lose and change. Why the automatic type? You just set it with remote control or buttons. On light tap or low tap changer and offload tap changer. Who is the person that asked? Are you okay with the answer? Victor, Mr. Victor. So I don't really get it. said offload tap changer. Off, on unload tap changer. It's okay. like a switch. So your your transformer is already on load. You can tap change it to the desired value. There are some offload tap changer, just like your changeover switch. You can I, your gear switch and your isolator. You can you don't operate isolator on load. Why that of changeover? You can operate it on load. All right, thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Hey, Amen. Well, your hand is still up. Do you have any further question? No, no, no. All right, thank you, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to with you for this period. Thank, thank you. you very much, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Let's get in place now. Let's get in place. Thank you for the opportunity thank to you. What's thank your name? Sorry, I don't remember. Okay. Thank you very much.